In my video on the best uncover analysis procedure in XPSS, I demonstrated the procedure to perform a one-way uncover in XPSS using this set of data. These were the results produced in that video. However, in today's video, I'll be demonstrating the best way to interpret these uncover results. Please endeavor to see this video to the end. My name is Titokan and this is Titokan Max Solutions, a YouTube channel for improving the knowledge of how to do things. The first table here is between subject factors. This table displays the summary of the independent variable diet, which is about the type of food plan. As you can see, there are three different food plans or diets. The first food plan here is keto diet, followed by vegan diet, and then the controlled diet. All the food plan has 11 cases each, showing that there was equal number of participants in the survey. The second table is the descriptive statistics table. This table provides the unadjusted mean and standard deviation of the dependent variable for different diets. This information is however not the focus of ANCOVA because the information presented in this table does not have the influence of the covariate variable age, but it's practical that you still report the information in this table. Now, to proceed beyond this point, you have to ensure that the most important assumption for ANCOVA is not violated by your data. That is, you should ensure that the assumption of homogeneity of error variances across groups is not violated by your data. To determine whether the assumption is violated or not, proceed to look at the table of Levin's test of equality of error variances. If the homogeneity of variances assumption is violated, this can raise the dust of type 1 or type 2 error when testing the effect of independent variable. However, if the p-value designated as SIG is less than 0.05, then the Levin's test is significant and the assumption of homogeneity of variances is violated or not met. But if the p-value is greater than 0.05, then the Levin's test is not significant and this will be considered as evidence that the assumption of homogeneity of variances is not violated. So as you can see from this table of Levin's test of equality of error variances, the p-value designated as SIG is 0.387 and is greater than 0.05. This means that the assumption is met and not violated, indicating that the error variance of the dependent variable is equal across groups. As a matter of fact, it is with this kind of result for Levin's test that you can have the confidence to proceed to interpret the other tables, especially the table of test of between subjects effects. Now, confidently proceed to the next table called test of between subjects effects. In this table, you are to concentrate only on the information provided for the independent variable diet. As you can see, the degree of freedom is 2, the F statistics is 0.433, while the p-value designated as SIG is 0.653. This means that the effect of diets or types of food plan is not statistically significantly different. Suffice to me that the weight gained by each participant is not statistically significantly different from one another despite the different food plan or the diets. This is because the covariant variable, which is age, has been used to control or adjust the diet or food plan for each participant. As a result, the pairwise comparison output table will indicate values greater than 0.05 for the p-value. If you choose to interpret output for the covariate variable age, which researchers usually don't do for ANCOVA, as you can see here, the p-value for age is 0.004, which is statistically significant. This is expected because the age variable is covariately adjusting or controlling the diet for the weight gain. This means that the covariant variable is doing its work perfectly. But don't forget that the data I used for this demonstration is fictitiously generated, so your results from using real data can have better implications. The amount of variance in the weight of participants explained due to diet or food plan is contained in the partial ETA square column. 
As you can see, the partial ETA square for diet is 0 0.029, which means that 2.9% variance in the weight gained by the participants is only explained by the diet or the different food plans. Similarly, more variance as much as 25.5% in the weight gained by the participant is explained by the age variable. This is also expected because the age variable is covariantly adjusting or controlling the diet for the weight gain. Now, let's proceed to estimated marginal mean section. Number one, the grand mean table. This table provides the grand mean for the dependent variable adjusted for the covariate in the model. This was one of the reasons you have selected the type 3 for the sums of square during the procedure for ANCOVA analysis. So the mean and standard deviation here are the average of the adjusted group means. However, this table is just for record purposes. Number two, estimates table. This table is similar but more relevant than the descriptive statistics table. If you compare the two tables, you will see there are differences in their mean and standard deviation values. This is so because the covariate variable, which in this case is age, has adjusted or controlled the system for this table of estimates to produce actual and relevant results. However, this table provides the adjusted group means on the dependent variable. The differences in these means are what are being tested in the analysis of covariance or ANCOVA. So you are strongly advised to report this table when you perform ANCOVA analysis. The next table to discuss is the pairwise comparison table. But quickly, I want you to know that the information in this table of pairwise comparison is based on the adjusted means values of the estimates. So this table consists of pairwise test of differences in the adjusted means from the table of estimates. But generally, since the p-value of diets under the test of between subjects effect is 0.653 and therefore not statistically sufficient, technically means that the pairwise comparisons among the diet or food plan will not be significantly different. So the difference in the adjusted means between keto diet and vega diet is 3.742 and the p-value is 1 showing that there is no significant difference between the two diets. Similarly, the difference in the adjusted means between the keto diet and the control diet is minus 4.225. Again, the p-value is 1, meaning that there is no significant difference between the two diets. Again, the difference in the adjusted means between the vegan diet and the control diet is minus 7.967 and the p-value is 1, indicating there is no significant difference between the two diets. As you can see, the p-value designated as SIG is 1 for all the comparisons, and there is no asterisk anywhere in the mean difference color. This shows that statistically, there is no significant difference between the pair of diets. If you proceed to the profile plot of the estimated marginal means of weight of participants, you will see that it is evident that the estimated marginal means of the weight of participant is not statistically significantly different among the diets. What this means is that though the values may be different, the difference is not big enough to statistically say that the difference is significant. And if you return to the estimates table, you will see that the adjusted means values are more close than different. So, in summary, and COVA in XPSS allows researchers to assess group differences in a continuous dependent variable while controlling for the effect of covariance. By incorporating covariance into the analysis, and COVA provides a more clearer understanding of the relationship between variables and helps reduce error variance, thereby increasing the accuracy of statistical conclusion. This is how to interpret one-way analysis of covariance or one-way ANCOVA in XPSS. And I hope you'll be able to replicate this procedure to interpret your own results. But right now, we have come to the end of this video. If you like this video and you want to see more video content like this, please like this video by giving it a thumbs up, share this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel to receive first-hand notification every time I publish new and always useful content. Subscription is free.
Thanks for your time and subscription. Thanks for liking and sharing this video. And I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye.